Today we're going to be taking a look at another rock and ground type Pokemon in Golem. Now we've seen other runs like Onyx and even a pure ground type like Marowak be pretty mid-level runs and we've seen Rhydon overcome the many weaknesses and it just had a solid time. So where would this little soccer ball fall on the tier list? With double weaknesses to water and grass as well as Lorelai and her ice types waiting at the end of the run, this type combination always presents a challenge, especially when you throw in Kanto's biggest menace into the mix. As for the stats, Golem is very physically weighted, it has really good bulk, it has massive defense, it has a decent HP stat, as well as a pretty high 110 base attack stat, but the rest, they're just not that good. 55 special, it just enhances our weaknesses, and 45 speed means that we're going to have to put in a little more work just to overcome those problems. Now the potential problems, they don't end there. When you look at the level up learn set, what sticks out is that you only have tackle and defense curl to start off the game. And that means this early game doesn't look great on paper and outside of getting earthquake at a pretty early level there's not much going on here but we do get a badge boosting move and that's pretty nice as for the tms it's not really that deep but you do get solid moves with things like mega punch for the early game dig and body slam for the mid game and then two great stab moves in rock slide and earthquake to round us out and those are about the only thing worth mentioning there's one huge distinguishing factor that does set golem apart from its other ground counterparts and and that's the fact that it's surprisingly in the medium slow leveling group. Now a while back, a commenter brought this to my attention and it's actually really big for the run considering it means we'll be getting a lot of levels faster early in the game and that's just what we needed to smooth out what I initially thought was going to be a complete slog grinding out before Brock. Now outside of that, have you guys ever noticed that Machamp and Golem seemed like they were originally supposed to be kind of like the Escavalier Aselgore trades from later generations? They both take things from each other's middle evolutions. Golem just straight up takes Machoke's face and then Machamp takes on Graveler's arms. It's just a little tidbit, but something I find very interesting. But I just think it's fun to use these traded Pokemon since as a kid, they're not something you would normally see in a casual playthrough. Maybe you would trade them later in the game to a friend and use them a little bit, but you would never get to use them in this situation. With Alakazam being the top dog of the tier list at the moment and both Gengar and Machamp both having great showings, it'll be interesting to see if Golem and follow suit or if it's going to be the odd man out and before we begin i'd like to quickly say that likes and comments are really what help a channel grow and i just love building the community so whether you are someone new maybe someone who doesn't really think about that sort of thing or if you're a returning subscriber like triple shizzle maybe you like solo run content and you just like to help the channel out scroll down like the video and tell me right now how you guys think golem will do in the run now i've been doing my intro just to get out my initial thoughts before i actually do the run and i thought that this one would be anywhere from three hours to three and a half hours could be a little worse if the low speed kind of impacted the run more than i hope but that's my personal prediction and i can't wait to see what you guys think and with that out of the way i think you can sit back relax grab yourself a soda pop and let's see how this little soccer ball performs the crux of this run is figuring out the start of the game this is what took me the longest to figure out obviously tackle until you were level 16 is not the best since brock is going to resist it and trying to streamline this process it was just the key to unlocking Golem's full potential. With high attack, the first rival battle is not an issue. And I do pick Bulbasaur here. It's easily the hardest starter. I always pick the hardest starter. Razor Leaf, especially when it comes to the late game, is just so oppressive. It doesn't matter if you're badge boosted 8,000 times. Crits ignore those changes and it's going to kill you no matter what. And after that, my Golem changeups, they start really early. The medium slow leveling group means that we're just going to be leveling up really quick, but we do need a lot of levels. So I immediately begin grinding grinding right after this first rival battle and the goal here is to deplete all of my power points after the oaks parcel segment and when I finally do that I'm around level 10 and that's just the magic of the medium slow leveling group in action at level 10 I do take on the optional rival battle on route 22 and level 10 makes this one pretty comfortable even if I got sand attacked you just have so many uses of tackle and the bubble sword doesn't have a damaging grass move just yet so I do think you could just brute force it but either way this eliminates backtracking just to go ahead and get this out of the way now and we can start to look ahead. I'll be battling all of the bug catchers in Viridian while mixing in some wild battles and something I think that is educational for maybe someone who 
doesn't play red and blue specifically is that the patches of grass with the stars on them in the bottom right corner are bugged. They have no encounter rates on them, and if you're doing a run like this where you actually need to battle wild Pokemon, it can be frustrating if you don't know this. Now the best thing that I have found is just to find a vertical segment of grass, go up and down, and it just kind of feels more efficient. When I finish the final bug catcher, I'm just a little bit short of my overall goal, so I do have to heal. I come back, I fight a couple of more wild Pokemon, and I hit my goal, which is level 14 with around 410 experience left to the next level, and now we can look ahead to the Light Gears Junior Trainer. If you are in this experience range, you will hit level 15. That's what's really important, and I guess I'll talk about why maybe I didn't do Light Years Junior Training Blackout Grinding. It's been really good for some videos, but the fact that we're rock type, we resist normal moves, it would be very hard to lose this battle, and it's not something that's very fast and efficient when you are just as hard to kill as Golem is. This is kind of a situation like the optional rival battle, where even if you take a couple of sand attacks from the sand shrew, you just have so much tackles that it's really just, you can't lose this fight really, unless you get really unlucky. But when that's done, I think we can finally just take a look at Brock. And this one's just not that great. In practice, it was very slow. You're doing resisted moves, and even if the Geodude uses a single defense curl, it can really slow this battle down to a crawl. Now, the main reason this is the run you're watching right now is because I get the most miraculous luck I've ever seen, and Geodude, it goes nothing but straight tackles. It doesn't use a defense curl one time, and I've played this game a lot. I've been playing this game since 2021, almost two years at this point, and I've never seen this in my entire life, so I knew I just had to make this the run when I was doing it. As for the Onyx, you don't outspeed it, that's unfortunate, and how this battle went in practice is that you tackle, if it uses Bide, you use Defense Curl, and since Geodude always used Defense Curl in my practice battles, then you would inevitably have to burn every single use of your Growl because you're going to run out of tackles, and eventually you would end up on Struggle Strats. It was very slow, it was very tedious, getting done with the Brock Split at 25 minutes was absolutely spectacular because it was several minutes ahead of anything I had done in practice, so I'm just gonna try to ride this momentum when we're going forward. We do learn Rock Throw after the fight at level 16, and I'm gonna say something that I never thought I would say. Rock Throw, it wasn't that bad this run. I've been really harsh on this move in the past. It only has 65% accuracy, and honestly, to my surprise, it didn't really miss that much in the run, and it kinda sped things up a little, which is, you know, maybe the last time we'll ever hear that. As for Route 3 and Mount Moon, there are a few optional things Things that we can take note of. The first is that I pick up the bug catcher on route three in addition to the last. Usually I'll skip one of these, do one or the other, but I'm picking up both today. Then when we get inside of Mount Moon, I do pick up the super nerd. I always talk about him. And then I go to the double grass last. I do this because rock throw is a one shot, but I do miss here. And things get a little scary since we are double weak to grass, but I do clutch it out. But this one was a little bit closer than I probably would have liked. Next up, I do get mega punch. Pretty big for the early game. And in neutral situations, situations is actually just better than rock throw. And after that, we take on the Raticate Grunt. Now, this is something you would just normally skip because Raticate is kind of an out of place and scary Pokemon for this early in the game. But since we resist normal moves, it's perfect to take on for this run. With all this extra training and the gift of the medium slow leveling group, I finished this segment at level 21. And that's about the most efficient route that I could come up with. But unfortunately, there's one potential hang up when you look at rival number two. I can only manage a a speed tie with the Pidgeotto, and that kind of puts the battle into Arceus's hands. It goes for a quick attack, and I'll say once again that Rock Throw actually came in clutch here, and perhaps I have judged it too harshly because it takes out the Sand Attacking Menace in one hit, and we can move on just like that. From there, I'm just gonna cruise past the next two Pokemon, and there's nothing really to commentate on, but as far as Bulbasaur, we get just a tiny little nibble, a tiny little taste of how much damage a Vine Whip can do, but we are healthy enough to survive and we can move on. From there, there's not much to talk about in terms of the route towards Bill's house. I don't do anything extra, and the levels make it pretty quick. Now this brings us to the next problem, and I guess we need to start thinking about Misty. With slow speed and the threat of a double super effective bubble beam, it would probably be the smart play, the obvious play to skip over her, just like most runs have to do, but today, I'm feeling a little bit brash. I'm feeling a little bit daring. When I finish up Bill's, I do grab Dig. 150 50 effective power with stab along with our 110 base attack is massive and I'm willing to kind of roll the dice here so let's just kind of dive into Misty and see how this one goes.
The first thing to note, and I know I'm bringing up the medium slow group a lot, but it does allow us to outspeed the Staryu with all these extra levels, and here it's a guaranteed one shot with Dig, so it's a non-issue, we can move on. As for the Starmie, it's kind of a coin flip, I am outsped, if it goes for Bubble Beam, I'm dead, there's no way around it. On the first attempt, it does go for an X Defend, and that's kind of unfortunate, because that means it can survive, and it does go for the Bubble Beam right after that, and that means that's our first reset of the run, not too surprising. On our second attempt, I go for dig, it goes for water gun. I can survive a water gun. I hit the dig and I just get really unlucky. It doesn't kill it. And I take a second water gun for our second reset. And if you're wondering, dig at this level, at this range, has around an 81% chance to one shot star me. So that's why I'm taking these odds. And we're going to see in the third attempt, it kind of goes just how you draw it up. I tank the water gun. I use dig. I one shot it and I win. That's, that's why I was willing to roll the dice here because it's a pretty high probability overall. It just doesn't need to use bubble beam turn one now we can take it down to the ss and and body slam it's a very welcome addition it's strong it only takes one turn and it has 100 percent accuracy unlike most of the things we've been forced to use up to this point in the run having this move is really all you need to trivialize rival number three especially when we now outspeed the pidgeotto now i could have just used dig to make the ivysaur guaranteed but instead i just spammed body slam it's not worth talking about we can just move on let's take a look at surge now and we're a ground type and we don't even need dig here i actually show him some mercy by using only body slam and i need to just quickly move on from this footage because my video might get flagged for being overly violent after that nothing happens in rock tunnel it's very quick we can skip over it let's pick back up in celadon now i'm still getting the usual high money items in the rocket hideout and after the early game we've had golem's run becomes pretty straightforward from this point on giovanni is very easy this run and now we can start to to look ahead at our first Celadon buy. The main thing to note about buying now and why it didn't hold off is for Rock Slide. We really need it. It has higher damage, higher accuracy, and it's just a great asset because we have a few spots coming up very soon that we just absolutely need it, and it was pretty key to get it right now. Outside of that, I can't afford five Carbos for the extra speed, and we can just move on. For Pokemon Tower, this is why you need Rock Slide, and this is why I had to rush it. The Gyarados, it has Hydro Pump, and I don't need to tell you guys how awful that could be and this just allows you the ability to one-shot it and when you're looking at Pokemon Tower as a whole we do have dig for the ghost and the only thing worth mentioning in Pokemon Tower was kind of a tough decision you actually learn earthquake at level 36 but I do opt not to learn it just yet and that's because I really value the time skips that dig give you way more at this point earthquake is a great move we all know that I will pick up the TM later and we will be using it but I just feel like learning this move now would be a net loss because the dig time saves are just so important and I think it would outweigh the turn saves that Earthquake would give us now. That's, I guess, what I'm trying to say. Am I making any sense? From there, it's down to the Safari Zone. And I'm picking up basically everything here as well. The Carbos, the Protein. We're getting the final HMs. And now it's time for Erica. And you might be surprised that I'm actually here this early. But notice how I don't even save after I get done with the Execute Beauty. And that's because this battle is 100% free. 100% guaranteed. High attack, faster speed, and digs neutral damage. It just ensures that we can one-shot the two Pokemon that matter. And Tangela, it just does its best. Bless its little heart. Here's something pretty clutch for the run because I made a mistake, a huge blunder here. And this kind of saved the run overall. I forgot to grab a Great Ball when I was in the Mart. And remembering now makes the time loss really minimal. But it's very important that I remembered to get this Great Ball now. And I needed to mention it in the video. Now we can go down to Fuchsia. I do grab a good rod. And now we can just take a look at Uncle Koga. Now we do have Dig. But my power points, they're a little bit low because I forgot to heal and I have to use other moves. But I gotta say here, it's always surprising to me when a rock type gets poisoned, but it is what it is. The battle here ends with a patented wheezing self-destruct while I'm underground with Dig, and that's one of my favorite things in all of Generation 1 to see. From there, I do catch a Surf user, and it's time for a very brisk swim down to Celadon. And you might be surprised that I'm not doing anything extra today outside of pondering if... Tombstoner, brother. 
is actually the 28th TM or not. As for Blaine, this battle is pretty significant because with Koga defeated, I finally have access to that speed badge boost. And this is the start of the game where lots of these late game battles, we're gonna start using defense curl and that's gonna allow me to bypass pretty much all extra training in the game. Now all you need to know here is that three badge boosts make me outspeed the final two Pokemon. It eliminates all risk. And since I have super effective damage, this one is a done deal. Next up, I'm doing a second Celadon buy. Now this is a strat I've been kind of refining and going back to for quite some time. More of these technical runs, they just need that little extra push and I feel like it really helps out a lot. Now all you need to know is that I can get four more proteins and that just helps some of our damage ranges. Now it's time for seal and I do go on the 10th floor. I pick up the vitamins and I pick up earthquake. I do pick up the optional protein and I miscalculated my stat experience here. I guess the wild battles earlier made it to where I couldn't really use the carbos now when I thought I could and I guess all I can do at this point is kind of hope that it doesn't bite us in the ass later and I think we could just take a look at rival number five. In this battle, it's really simple, and it's gonna rely on the badge boost as are most of the important fights from now on. Just like earlier, I really need Rock Slide to connect and take the Gyarados down, and everything outside of maybe avoiding the Sand Attack on the Pidgeot, it just doesn't matter. Now on the Growlithe, we can set up for this fight. You do need three for a specific reason, but we get a really bad stroke of luck. I get hit with an Ember, and I get burned. And if you didn't know, being burned halves your attack. And on top of that, look at my attack stat right now you can see that when the Growlithe goes for Leers the way the the coding works it's all kind of wonky it's very generation one you can see that it's reapplying the burn debuff and when it's all said and done I'm trying my best to set up badge boost but the burn attack debuff keeps getting reapplied and it's just impossible and since our attack is neutered at that point there's really no escaping our fate we do give it our best shot and ultimately we do face a reset here skipping ahead we do not get burned on the next attempt and here's why we need three badge boost. Two defense curls will let us outspeed the Alakazam and the third one is the most important because it puts Dig into a very high one shot range and avoiding Razor Leaf this run is number one priority and just like that we get past the tough challenge fairly easy. When that's done I head up to Sabrina and the end is pretty much in sight. Just like you'll see with pretty much all of these end game battles I do need to be a dirty badge boost abuser once again and on the Kadabra I just have to tank a hit and move on. Mr. Mom it's where you will set up and like last time three curls do allow us to outspeed the Alakazam and overall it makes this fight consistent and it gets us another badge. Now the important thing here is that this is the last time in the run where we're going to be using Dig to save time and that means that Dig has finally ran its course and finally we can get that thick beefy juicy stabbed earthquake into our move pool and with the final battles of the run coming up it's going to be a big help. Now we only have one badge to go and before we demolish Giovanni, let's talk about a pretty key adjustment here. I take on the extra tamer here that has the Tauros. This puts my experience in a much better range for rival number six, and it's the main reason I fought it. It's not for the extra levels or anything like that. But one thing I didn't take into account is that you can't go backwards on these obnoxiously slow warp puzzles, and I have to go the full way around. And I don't think I'm gonna redo the run, I'm not gonna change it, but it's just kind of annoying. As for Giovanni, I don't outspeed the Doug Trio, but it is fine. Overall, I I didn't heal so I'm a little bit low on PP so I do have to use body slam mid fight just so that I don't run out of earthquakes on the ride on but it's a fairly clean fight and since we talked about that tamer and how that sets up our experience for rival number six let's just talk about him real quick this one is pretty much just like rival number five in the fact that we need to hit our rock slides especially on the Gyarados as we progress to this fight and you can see that's exactly what happens and as I tend to do I manipulated my experience just so that this pathetic puppy is here to allow us to set up. We need a lot more setup than we had to do earlier, so I need five total defense curls before I progress, and even though I can easily one-shot the Alakazam, that's not really what the setup is for. I just want to emphasize again that I made it my mission to never see a Razor Leaf this entire run, and five defense curls does put Earthquake in a guaranteed one-shot range to make this one very consistent as well, and you can see that these major fights, they're not really bad.
bad at all for Golem. And the fact that I haven't had to grind anything extra has just been kind of like the icing on the cake, the cherry on top. Looking ahead, it's no surprise that we're not doing any optional battles here either. And outside of getting the rare candy, it's straight down to business. Now, if you remember in the ride on run, Lorelei, it was really messy. We were perfect up to that point. We had 18 resets. So in preparation, I do use nine of my 11 rare candies. And let's see if we'll meet the same fate or if Golem can just continue to impress us. And one of the things I love most about doing solo runs is that you'd learn from your other ones. And in the Farfetch video, we abused Dugong's AI and we're gonna do it here. I want it to use rest on turn two and so it doesn't fail, I do open up with a body slam to put some damage on it. On the first attempt, it simply just doesn't go for rest. I get a few Aurora beams and I go down and that's our first reset in a while. On the second attempt, you see how it's supposed to play out. In my notes, I had written down that two defense curls would be the riskier but faster strategy and three would be for more consistency so I opt to go for three defense curls to not have any more resets and we saw in ride on that cloister has disgusting defense and it makes this fight really rough but with three boost it's a guaranteed one shot barring that rock slide doesn't miss it doesn't and we're progressing on in the fight from there the boost give me the ranges that I need and overall this really tough challenge is down and it's in a much more impressive way than ride on did it remember I can't we had 18 resets there it wasn't great but let's keep this one rolling as for Bruno, I can pretty much sum this one up in one sentence. I go straight Earthquake. That's all there really is to say about this one. Agatha is a fight that I made a huge concession on. In no world was I ever going to be able to outspeed the Gengar, and I did really try in earlier iterations of this run to at least make it to where one badge boost would make me outspeed, but at the end of the day, I opted to cut out all those extra battles, and I kind of just let Jesus take the wheel. Now this one, it does start off rough, the way you don't want it to. I get put to sleep immediately and I'm thinking that this is pretty much the end but I do wake up I hit the earthquake but we're not in the clear yet because I am confused I do snap out of it I knock out the gold bat and I do have it set up to where I actually speed tie the haunter in this run but I do lose but it doesn't go for hypnosis and I am able to knock it out on Arbok I do call a little bit of an audible here I actually go for defense curls just to ensure that I outspeed the final Gengar I don't want to reset here and since I now outspeed the rest of the fight I'm just a couple of earthquakes away from finishing this fight and moving on. Now my friends Gyarados has been licking its chops. Lance has his up front and I can't badge boost to save myself so how will my preparation fare against the biggest menace in Kanto today? And the answer is that Golem can just one shot it with no issue and when I started looking at how much of a level I would need to be, how much lower I could be, this is what had the most promise for the entire run. Guys Golem, at this point I'm level 61. I could have been even lower and I still could have one shot and outsped the Gyarados, but it turns out that Lorelei was the bigger challenge. But outside of that, I do use a couple of defense curls to make the Dragonite ranges a little bit better. And this one's kind of a done deal. It was much easier than I thought. And we can just kind of take a look at the champion now. First up is the Pidgeot, it's insignificant. Now watch here, it does crit me, but it's barely a scratch on our rock solid Pokemon, and I do take it out. Then Alakazam decides that it's just had enough, and it crits me. I do take it out, but I'm fairly low, and this one is gonna take all of Golem's strength to make it out alive. On the ride on, this is my opportunity to set up, and I need five boost here. And I'm not gonna lie, since it knows Tail Whip and Leer, I kinda lose track and I kinda overcompensate here, but five boost is what I needed, and we can move on. And finally, at my final fight, Rock Slide, Accuracy, it finally fails me. It comes into play. I do miss, and we get to see at least one Hydro Pump hit me, and it forces another reset. But let's not focus on it. Let's not be sad about it. Let's jump right back into the next attempt. This time, the Alakazam doesn't crit, but it does confuse me. But luckily, I don't hit myself. I take it out. We do have high defense, so hitting myself is not a big deal. Ride on's next, and thank God, because I hit myself like 17 times here. I I do lose track of the boost once again, but I do need five, we know that. I do get those and we move on. And this time my aim is true. Rock Slide connects and the Gyarados threat is over and now it's just a matter of pressing A a few more times. Arcanine goes down to a single Earthquake and at the end of the fight, the boost guarantee that Earthquake will take down the Venusaur before it can even think about doing any super effective damage. And that's the battle and ultimately the run over with. 
and that's it. Golem has done it. Let me just say I did forget the crown in my overlay. Usually it's just automatic, but I did forget, so I had to add it in with post. I wanted to kind of do a meme like the dog wearing pants. Would it wear it like this or this? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, would it wear it on top of its body or on top of its head? But forget about that. My, my wife said it was a stupid joke, so I didn't put it in. With a final time of 2 hours, 37 minutes, and 39 seconds, Golem knocks Rhydon out of the water here. What's even more impressive is the total amount of resets. Now there are several resets that I just kind of consider bad luck and to only have five for the whole run considering the double weaknesses and problems that this typing has is really good. This run came down to two huge strengths that Golem has and that's a badge boosting move and the medium slow leveling group and it put together a really good run and it all came together for a surprisingly fast run. On the tier list this one has a pretty clear spot. It's almost equal with Starmie but I just think overall Starmie has less weaknesses a stronger late game so it feels right to put golem after it but it's honestly surprising how similar these two runs actually were and once you kind of you play these runs so much you kind of think you've seen it all but this one and just the comparison to starmie how close they were it was really a, a big surprise to me it was a great run and i've been saying this a lot but this is why you actually play the runs instead of just kind of looking at them on paper and today we just have another run that kind of performed way better than i thought it would initially so maybe i'm just a poor judge of runs but i'll let you guys decide that and once again special thanks to my channel members i really appreciate the support you guys provide it means a lot to me and it's nice to know i got some of you guys out there just kind of watching my back and supporting me feels pretty good and if you are still listening to my voice right now and you're not subscribed even if you are both of you anybody that's still listening to my voice that's what i should say i really appreciate you you're like the true viewers you're like the real mvps because getting that retention time up it's so important if you're not subscribed and you like solo run content you got to just hit the button but i do appreciate you if you're still hearing my voice right now and i think that's all i have for you guys i feel like i kind of rambled a little bit more in this script because i kind of rushed this one out i don't know if golem was like fully baked yet but that geodude attempt where he used straight tackle kind of made me just be like okay i gotta play perfect i gotta get the run i did make some mistakes but overall that's it and i'll catch you on the next one bye